All right, hello everybody and welcome to the Frantic Talks podcast episode 32. I am your host, Frantic, and I'm here as with me always is my lovely co-host, Grunt. Hi. And we are back. Yeah, hi, we are back after about a week, two weeks roughly. I uh, hope you guys had a fun July 4th and didn't blow your hands off or anything like that. We uh, took that weekend off to enjoy our time with our family. So hope you guys got to do the same. If you don't have a family, I'm sorry. Don't mean to upset you. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about these past two weeks. What have you been up to, Grunt? Uh, a few various things, actually. Um, I've been working on trying to <clears throat> clean my room a little bit, basically, so I can, you know, get a fancy desk in here, and Ooh. you won't you won't see a couple posters behind me and some books at one point. You'll see a nice flag from Assassin's <laughs> Creed at one point. That's a little ways off, so I've started work on that a little bit. Um, nice. Yeah. A few other things uh, I picked up doing is I went back and started playing Just Cause 3 again. Just this week, as a matter of fact. I saw you tweeting about that. Yes, there's... It's... I can't remember the last time I talked about it on the podcast, but um, they... When the game first released, it had all kinds of issues and that stuff. Bugs, glitches, you know, the game would crash, you know, other things. Right. Um, since then, the majority of those issues have been fixed. It still has frame rate issues... So, you know, a lot of explosions are happening. It seems like you're playing the game in the Matrix during one of their patented <laughs> slow motion scenes. That's never a good thing in a game, though. No. No, it really isn't. And I don't think... If it hasn't been fixed now, that's not something that's going to be fixed. Yeah, that would require probably a lot of overhauling on, like, the graphics engine and stuff, which, right. if I'm not mistaken, that's not easy. Yeah. Um, but now that a lot of the main problems have been gotten rid of it's actually quite fun i've been enjoying it just going around freeing villages and uh doing other odd and end jobs in the game so it's fun gotcha well that's cool uh one of my buddies at work talks about uh how he has it on pc and mm -hmm. he was getting really bad like cpu over usage and all kinds of random things mm -hmm. and it turns out it was because uh it was connecting to the check online leaderboards constantly. Uh, yeah, see, that's that's the same thing that it does it on the console version too. So, you know, since it's the same game. Well, the thing is, on a PC, it, ha it pops up and asks you to let it ac let it access a Windows firewall. So, if you deny that, your game's better. Oh. So you can't do that on an Xbox or a PlayStation. Mm. That's disappointing. <laughs> so that's interesting. Okay. Well, well, cool. I'm glad you're enjoying that. Oh yeah. Plus, I also want a couple games, newer games this past week, just Friday, as a matter of fact. Really? Doing what? Uh, well, Major Nelson, uh, Xbox Live's Major Nelson, as he prefers to be called, I guess, uh, puts out a tweet every Friday called Free Code Friday, you know? We just answer a question with the hashtag Free Code Friday, and you're entered to win whatever it is he's giving away that week. Um, nice. This week he was giving away a couple of codes for a game called Dex, D-E-X, and then the other one was Carmageddon Max Destruction, I believe. Is the... I think I've heard of both of those. I just don't know what they are particularly. I know, I know the names is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, really the only one I've looked at because it looks interesting has been, looks the most interesting, I should say, is uh, Carmageddon. It Aren't you like just looks... destroying stuff with a car? Pretty That's much, exactly what yeah. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Basically, um, from the one community-made clip I watched of it on the console, it's actually it looks like it's basically just Death Race, the video game. Oh, nice, fun. That does sound like a lot of fun. Oh, congrats on winning those. Yes, and I need to turn a light on in here quickly. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a little dark, but it's okay. <laughs> We've got okay. storms moving in, so there's stuff uh, moving. Yes, you can't really have your window open. No. I got you. That's really weird. I, I checked my weather because I thought, okay, so this morning Grunt texted me and said uh, the, the little power went out of his place. Uh, and we'll, we can talk <laughs> about why in a minute, but uh, I thought that meant, oh, he's getting hit by like a storm now. So I checked my weather and saw that I've, we have nothing hitting us. We're, I live in Ohio. He's in Illinois, so I usually get what he gets a day later, roughly. Uh, I'm getting like nothing the next two days in terms of precipitation, like 0% all across the board. Oh, jeez. But his his uh, his uh, power was out, and you want to say why? <laughs> um... The exact reason was animal contact with facilities. Which is sad, but 
hilarious at the same time. Because right? there's yes. one squirrel in the world from what you were saying. <laughs> yes, basically, that's what I think. All oh, I know is guy. I woke up for the morning, was up for like five minutes, and then all of a sudden I heard a explosion somewhere, and then that was it. The power was out for like the next half hour. So something ran into a transformer, roughly. Is what Probably, happened. yeah. <laughs> all right, but, well. <laughs> but that's basically how my past couple of weeks have been. I've thrown nice. some firefight in there. Warzone firefight. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll talk about that here shortly once I let you know how my week has gone. Um, What's that? It's been pretty interesting. Uh, so, finally picked up video games after about a month of not playing them, yet talking about them, and that was to play Firefight. And then Xbox started their summer sale for about a week here. Uh, it's actually done tomorrow as of recording this, which is Monday, July 11th. That sound right? Uh, yeah, great. we'll go with it, because that's yeah, right. that's right. Monday, July 11th, the uh, sale will end. There's some pretty good deals. Uh, the deals I jumped in on were The Witcher 3 at $25 and Wolfenstein at 15 You had to play The Witcher, but I played a little bit of Wolfenstein, and that was a lot of fun. You don't hmm. know what Wolfenstein is. It's kind of like a reimagining of World War II where Nazi, the Nazis have tested really weird stuff and have, like, crazy mech soldier type stuff uh and uh there's other stuff but it's kind of like just uh there's all that nazi tets testing that we kind of knew happened but didn't seem like any of it really worked and this is like what if it did work you know kind of like how nazi zombies and call of duty was based off of that right so, that's essentially what it was um and so far it was a lot of fun there were like these crazy big ass robot dogs that were attacking us and it was it's all fun in games but anyways Sounds i like got fun. Yeah, got to play that, and then I uh, did some magic. Uh, Friday night, did magic at Luke's. Luke being the guy who writes with me on the magic uh, subreddit. Not the magic subreddit. Sub I'm the magic subsite of Frantic Talks. Uh, we put together this big old deck of cards, about 450 of them. <laughs> played a format where you just draw a card, and you can play it without having to pay mana, so you just play for free, but you only get one a turn. It's technically called Type 4. Uh, and it was really fun and crazy. So <laughs> that's a thing. Um, other than that, uh, that's basically all I did. I uh, played a little bit. Oh, I guess I did play some Steam games. I played a little bit of this game called Cthulhu Realms that I got from the Humble Monthly Bundle. I subscribed to it uh, when we talked about it last time because it was like, man, there's some pretty good games in that. And Cthulhu Realms was one of them. Uh, technically, Cthulhu Realms is a free game, but it has a full version that you can pay for, and I got it. Oh, uh, nice. And it's a deck-building game that has some really interesting mechanics. I only got to play a couple rounds. There's a lot to memorize, so I was like, oh, this is kind of overwhelming. Hmm. And then nice. My buddy convinced me to buy The Killing Floor, which is a sense, this is just a zombie survival game, but you only have to last like four rounds, but it's super freaking hard. But you also get perks, so like I could be like an assault person or a shotgun person or a sniper, stuff like that. And you can level up your perks as you go, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, he convinced me to buy that, and then we've been playing that a little bit. And a little bit of CSGO in there. As we were like, oh, what other games do we have together on Steam? And he has CSGO, and that's like it. So <laughs> played a little bit of that, and that was fun. So, Hearing hearing you mention CSGO, uh, one thing I've started to do the past couple weeks, uh, mm -hmm. TBS, I believe it is, uh, Turner Broadcasting Station, or whatever the acronym stands for, abbreviation, uh, they have this show that they show every Friday night, I believe it is. Um, it's called E-League. But the actual thing they that's based off of is called the E-League. Uh, mm. But it's basically competitive Counter-Strike. And it's been really fun, actually, watching some of those um, matchups that they've had. I can't remember the last one was. It was... Uh, God. I have no idea. I've never actually watched competitive Counter-Strike, although I've played it a little bit, and people... I mean, it's your typical game, where if you jump in and not knowing what you're doing, people are going to be mad at you, because oh, that's yeah. just how games work. Yeah. Like, for instance, we, we picked the casual setting. Now, we both know what we were doing, don't get me wrong. Uh, we picked the casual setting, and we got into a game of what's the equivalent of Search and Destroy. Um, it's called just Bomb Scenario, I think. Mm -hmm. And my buddy was the, one, the last guy standing in this round, and... He, it was 1v1, he walked He walked out into this open area and like kind of looked up higher than, he, he basically looked where you can't get to, uh, just because he didn't know where to look for the guy, and he was just kind of not used to the map. 
Mm -hmm. And the dude shot him while he was looking kind of up in the air. Kind of like, you know, if someone doesn't doesn't know what they're doing, just looks around. And is just like, oh, what's going on? I'm playing a game. Uh, it's the best way to describe it. And as soon as he didn't do that, a bunch of the te our teammates started getting pissed and voting to kick him. So I just typed into the command, uh, into the chat. I was just like, so not clutching on a casual server means we shouldn't play? Hmm, interesting, guys. Which is total <laughs> bullshit. Just because you don't yeah. know how to play the game on a casual server. I mean, that's what a casual server is for. Right. And we were on the reserve maps, too, which means the maps aren't even in competitive rotation. We were on the casualest of casual places to be. And people were getting upset that he potentially didn't know how to play the game. We fin both finished the game doing pretty decent for ourselves, but it was just like, are you, are you, are you guys for real right now? Like, in the politest way possible, go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's basically how that's, I felt. That's putting it pretty politely. And people took what I said and thought it was funny and then just started... And then a couple of times some dudes initiated kicks because they didn't clutch on a casual server and it kind of became a joke. So in all, in all seriousness, it ended rather lightheartedly, but still, it was just like the initial, seriously... Come on. <laughs> hey, this guy has a point. So, anyways, that was pretty much my week. Um, mostly I was going to say I did some stuff last night, but it was all just family related, so it doesn't need to be really said. <laughs> <laughs> Although I went to a wedding, that's why I couldn't uh, couldn't do this last week, uh, yesterday. But anyways, let's uh, let's move on here. So I stop rambling and start talking about some stuff that has some substance to it. <laughs> Uh, first and foremost, uh, July 7th, that was a day, wasn't it, Grant? It was indeed a day. So what happens on July 7th of every year? July 7th is Bungie Day. If you're, you know, a Bungie fan, um, or familiar mm -hmm. with it, even. Um, it's a day that the community created to celebrate, basically, the company itself and everything they've done and they've given to us in terms of games and that stuff. Um, and in on July 7th of 2007 is mm -hmm. when Bungie themselves started actually acknowledging it and, um, well, not, they knew about it and they acknowledged it, but that's when they really started to say, hey, this is cool, you're doing this for us, here, here's our part, to, our part in it. Right. Um, and, you know, every year they've given us something, um... Whether it's been like I think 2008, they released a new map for Halo 3. Um, 2000. Yeah, I think I remember that. 2009, I think, is when they had the Bungie versus the World playlist, where if you match them in Halo 3 and you beat them, uh, you got, you got recon or flame. I don't remember. Uh, it was recon. You got recon armor, which was awesome to have at the time. Yep, because only only employees and very select people had that. Yeah, and I remember the very first season of Griff, official season of Griffball, the winners got recon armor. Mm-hmm, yep, they did that. Um, and then one year, they had another Bungie vs. the World playlist, where if you got matched up against them and you beat them by 20 or more kills, you got the Staketacular medal. Mm. Um, you actually got steak from them. <laughs> so. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So they always um, do some fun stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's basically just a celebration of the company and the community, started by the community, so okay. it's just a fun day in general. So what happened this year? Uh, this year, what Bungie did was they announced the Year 2 Moments of Triumph for Destiny. Um, you have until, I think, September 20th, 13th or 20th. I don't remember when it is. I think it might be the 20th. Which is when Rise of Iron comes out, by the way. Um, but you go to your postmaster, you pick up the Moments of Triumph book, and it has all of the fancy little things that to complete in there uh, to unlock emblems and shaders as you complete these items. Oh, um, nice. It's basically just a little way of saying, yeah, I did this, I experienced everything the game had to offer in this time frame. So yeah, they did it's that. A, it's an exclusive they, to the time. Yeah. Can't yeah, they, the name. Yeah, they uh, did it last year for the base version of the game until the Taken Kings release. So, you know, you had to beat, like, the Vault of Glass on normal mode, uh, Crota on normal mode. I think you actually had to do them both on normal and hard mode. Uh, you had to beat... Uh, the level 35 Prison of Elders, because that was the hardest thing to do once uh, House of Wolves came out. 
Uh, you had to do all kinds of other stuff, and then if you did all of that, you got a fancy little emblem. And nice. it's basically just the same idea as that, only, you know, you do the various stuff that they came out with in the Taken King. Like, complete the King's Fall raid, uh, one is to finish an exotic sword quest, so... Right, so that's... I can't think of it. It's a timed exclusive is the best way to put it. Yeah, pretty much. I, I see these things with, like, holiday things. Like, World of Warcraft, every holiday has something going on. Like, Halloween, there's stuff. There's stuff on Thanksgiving, on Labor Day, yeah. all that fun stuff. So This yeah. is a similar thing, but it's spongy day, so not a federally notified holiday or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, pretty much. Re recognized, federally recognized. Whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. much. Get your, get your moments of triumph going, then. That oh, sounds yeah. sounds pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it is. All right, cool. So, like, that was uh, the 7th, every 7th. Uh, every July, July 7th. Yeah, every July 7th. I, that was a really weird wording there. <laughs> seventh day of the seventh month. Yeah. And So hop uh, on that. I'm trying to think. I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be next year that it'll be um, recognized by Bungie for the past uh, seven years. Ten years. Seven. Ten years. So, yeah, technically there. Yeah. Tenth anniversary of recognizing it. But yep. apparently it's been 25 years of Bungie. It has been. Or They've been around for 25 years. So congrats to them. Just two years longer than I've been alive. Hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to move on to what we used to be Bungie and is now 343, which, by the way, 343 is 7 to the third power. So there's still hints Ooh. of 7 in there. Or in other words, July 7, 2007. Even though that's not when they were made, but, you know, whatever. Like I always say, seven is indeed darker. Oh yeah, definitely is. But anyways, Warzone Firefight. We talked about this coming out and how we were very excited for it because uh, not only Grunt, not only do I like it, but Grunt loves Firefight mode, at least from the older Halos. God, it's amazing. So oh, yes, he was the best. Firefight is very fun. If you're unfamiliar with Firefight, even though we've mentioned it previously, Firefight's basically if you played Horde mode on Gears of War, it's pretty much the same thing. But it's basically you're fighting way in. Not endless waves, but waves of Covenant. Or mm -hmm. and Forerunners in this instance. <clears throat> and it's just, you know, kill them all, finish the round out, and if you can finish so many rounds, you beat it. Well, let's talk about that. So, Firefight, uh, Warzone Firefight in Halo 5 is in uh, Warzone. So it's a little different. It has requisitions. And you get these through typically just playing it. Uh, you know, like Warzone Rec Level 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Uh... Typically, and when you clear around, you get a big enough boost to probably get you to the next level of Rex. Depends uh, on how far you made it into the uh, into the level you're currently in. Like this morning, uh, I was at I had just hit level two at the start of like the second round, mm -hmm. um, and it was knights, so it was you had to kill like a certain amount of knights, um, and I didn't I wasn't able to do much because I still had a pistol and an auto rifle. Yay. Yeah. Um, and we finished that round, and it was. I got about halfway through it, and then the end of round boost got me to like three fourths of the way through rank two. So going into the third round, I still didn't have a battle rifle. <laughs> yeah, and I think. So the, the best way to put it here, in my opinion, is it was very hard and almost seemed like it hadn't been tested properly. But, from what I understand, the beta was so easy that no one had any challenge. <laughs> right. So it almost seems like they just decided to up the difficulty and then release it without even trying to play it. Right. Um, so, to put it in perspective, how many games have you won? Um, I would say in the couple weeks I've been playing it, probably, I've actually finished about 20. So you one, finished 20 games, or uh, so you've beaten them? Yeah, and yeah. I don't many... personally. I don't call it a win because you're not. You're just finishing the the, the round. So you know, I, okay. I, it's the same thing in my mind. You know, winning and finishing is the same thing in yeah. terms of terminology here. Right, right, right. Okay. And then, how many would you say you didn't finish? Um, easily that amount, if not three times that amount. Exactly. So, I've played. I want to say ten or eleven. I haven't won a single one. I haven't finished a single one. I've almost yeah. finished one. But it is so hard. And 
what I think it is a mixture of is the enemies are a little too smart. They are also too hard to kill with the weapons you get. And the rec system... This goes back to my day one complaint about the rec system, which is if you aren't doing good enough, you won't have the better weapons. So basically how the rec system works is like everything. every time you kill something, it kind of increases mar marginally. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when big things happen, like in Warzone Assault, for instance, where it's just Spartan on Spartan, uh, if you capture a base, you get more rec. You get a higher up rec thing. It'll typically unlock stuff. Right. So in, and in Firefight, if you finish a round, it tends to boost at at least half of its level. So if you're, like, really close to the next one, you're going to definitely get it. Yeah. It also um, depends on the enemy you kill. Because if yeah. you kill just a basic grunt you know you're not going to get as much rec points towards your next level um taking down like a legendary boss that spawns in in one of the it, rounds yeah so. exactly and so i think the problem is is if uh you have a it's a team of eight people so you would think with eight people you could do some damage uh but to me it just seems like it's scaled so much to where it's like if you all aren't really working as a team like mm -hmm. really working as a team and I mean, everyone's talking and like coordinated almost as if you're in a real war. You aren't going to do anything. Right. And that became very apparent very quickly. And while some would commend it for that, um, I don't think that's how it should be. Because it's really hard to get a group of eight people together. Oh, yeah. And to, to get along with them enough to do this. But uh, it's just so goddamn hard. And I think my biggest complaint is the respawn time. So each round is only three minutes. And the longer you play, well, every round you get into, it increases the spot respawn time. So I think you start at like 10 seconds respawn. And by the time you get to the final round, you're at 30 seconds. Well, 30 seconds, and I did the math on this, and I don't remember the number. I think it was like 10 or 15% of the time. If you die in the final round, which is the hardest round against really hard bosses, you spend 10% of the round waiting to respawn. Mm -hmm. Which is, you've got to spend the entire time killing the bosses or you won't beat it. So if yep. you die, you just basically are going to lose. Yeah. Which is total crap. Yeah. Uh, the, the biggest thing I have with it right now, aside from the difficulty, is probably the respawn time. Because uh, I, I get maybe the reason they don't want that is so you're not basically respawning every five seconds, just throwing bodies at it until you can eventually you know, overpower it and just get through it. I feel like that wouldn't even work. Uh, well, in the earlier rounds, it did, because the past couple games i played, we've had elites spawn in a certain area and a whole bunch of enemies, and we just threw ourselves at it until we eventually just got, like, five, six of us there by the elites to kill them. So uh. it works in the earlier rounds, but obviously not so much in the later rounds when you have, like, a 15, 20-second respawn. Right. Um, I guess I get that, but they should make the round length longer then. Yeah. I've also had it to where, you know, it, I had it happen today, as a matter of fact, um, this morning, where if you run out of time, but you kill the boss pretty much as time ends, that that's it. The game's over. Mm. We were on the final round of one, and we had to kill these uh, four hunters. And mythic enemies are like the ultimate boss in the for the round, for the game to spawn in. So we had four mythic hunters. They're basically just really, really powerful and, I guess, stronger enemies, you could say. And right. uh, we had trouble killing the other three to start with, but then we eventually got them down, and we were able to focus all of our fire on the last one, and he went down fairly quickly. He took out one of our scorpions at that time, which kind of hurt. But then we eventually killed him right as time expired, and it gave us the loss for it because we didn't kill him kill him before time. So that's happened. That happens way too often. Yeah. So I, I think the be the best things they can do is to like lower the difficulty a tad bit, guys. It is unbelievably terrible. It's like you walk yeah. out and you're just immediately pelted by everything. And then also, yeah. I'd say increase either the time or reduce spawn time. I would I would say both. Like, I'd increase the round time to, like, four minutes. It's not going to kill anything. And then, you know, reduce respawn time to not nearly as much as it is. 
Because, like, that last round, you can't afford to be gone for that long. No. I mean, if you die within the last minute, basically, that's it. You're out for the rest of the game. And that's a third of the round right there if it's three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, just... It's dumb. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Look, overall, I think it's a good idea. It's, it's, it's a place to start. But there was a beta for a reason. And it seems like they just kind of neglected it. Yeah. Not in the sense of, I mean, obviously they didn't neglect it in that way where, you know, they, they upped the difficulty because it was clearly too easy. But, you know, when you cha- drastically change something like that, like upping the difficulty and then don't test it and then you release it and everyone just loses. Right. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if only 20% of games have been finished. Yeah. Because of how hard it is. Yeah. Which is not a good thing, I don't think. I mean, to some, maybe. But if we're going to have us make a playlist for that, like, I don't know. A little legendary firefight or, or Warzone legendary firefight. If you really want to try this on this difficulty, <laughs> yeah. And you know that's that's one thing I've always argued. Well, I can't say argue because I don't really argue with people. Um, debated with people is the fact that firefight, you know, can be geared towards either your casual person or your person who wants a more difficult challenge. Hence, why playing Halo firefight on legendary. Um, you know, and with Warzone Firefight, you're kind of mashing the both of those people together. So I can understand the want for difficulty from people, but you know, it's not fun when you can play for like two hours and you don't win or finish any game. You know, it's like, wow, that was two hours well spent. Mm-hmm. I killed a bunch of aliens. Yeah, exactly. So, so that- I think. I think they need to tone down the difficulty a little bit. Um, one thing I maybe wouldn't mind seeing is maybe increase the rate at which you can gain requisition stuff because that's something that really. Yeah. Also, that when you're stuck, when you get into the third round fighting like mythic hunters and you have a pistol and assault rifle, what do you? Well, you you just give up. You quit. Yeah, you can't. You can't even hurt them. Like that's <laughs> like, it's like shooting right. a tank with a pistol. There's no point. Yeah, or getting a bunch of ghosts in the second round when you still have pretty much pistols and auto rifles yet maybe a few battle rifles but nothing they can take out oh, the yeah, that, quickly. that happened to me and you when we were playing last it was the la- the mm-hmm. it was four like elites that were really heavy in uh, armor and i yep. i think some of us had just gotten battle rifles at that point yep and the best we could do is use a plasma pistol and you can't even hijack the ghost so you have to destroy the ghosts so the best weapon you have is a plasma pistol to disable it for about two seconds <laughs> yeah yeah so, so I, I agree with that it should be easier to get wrecks yeah uh Overall, I enjoy it. You know, it's fun. I went back to playing it on a regular basis. It's just, I think for me to really, really fall in love with Firefight, Warzone Firefight, these changes need to be made. Yeah, I agree with you. So, and I hope they don't take too long to realize that or, you know, well, hopefully say... Hopefully next, by the next month's release of an update, they'll check, they'll fix it. That's yeah. Hope. Yeah. Okay. But that's what I think. Okay, well, cool. Um, that basically sums up what we think. I'd love to hear what you guys think, because I'm sure most of the people listening, we know you from Halo, so I would love to hear your guys' I thoughts on it. I don't know you, it. Halo. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely love to hear your comments. Uh, we're going to move on here. We are already getting close to time at this point. I figure this would be a longer episode just because we've been out for a week, and uh, I must say that next week we probably won't have an episode again, but we'll tweet about that later. Don't want to spoil it, but... <laughs> Um, I'm going to mention something really fast, and then we're going to talk about the main point I did want to talk about today. Uh, Summer Games Done Quick. Grunt, I understand you watched a little bit of that last night and the uh, day before, roughly? Uh, it was like Wednesday, Thursday night and a little bit uh, yesterday afternoon. Okay. Well, um, Summer Games Done Quick is just speedrunners, and they do this every year, kind of like the uh, gaming for... Uh, it's gaming for charity, basically. I don't remember the, actual, the one that started it. Uh, Child's Play? Child's Play? Extra Life. Extra Life, that's Extra it. Extra Life is the one. Um, it's essentially that they do, like, you know, marathons of gaming and raise money for charity. And uh, this year they broke their record and uh, raised $1.3 million. So good on them. That's really awesome. Uh, if you like speedrunning, that's definitely something you should check out. Just because speedrunning is awesome in general. I really enjoy it. But oh yeah, it's really cool. Oh, yeah. uh, they were able to raise so much money. That's, that's quite a bit of money. When I uh, was watching it yesterday afternoon, they had around nine hundred three thousand dollars donated. So, 
that's cool to see that they got that in the in that uh, time before it ended. Technically, they were about two thousand short of one point three million, but it was still basically one point three million, which is really awesome. Mm. So good for them. Uh, I'm sure everyone is very happy with that turnout because it's obviously record breaking and great for charity. Okay. Uh, nothing you can uh, at all get upset about with this. Oh, no. unlike our next topic. <laughs> That's how we segue right there. Buzzkill. Buzzkills. Okay, so this is going to be tied into with another game. But first off, if you haven't heard about this, uh, Counter-Strike Go has this big controversy that's been happening this past week. I think I heard about it on Tuesday, and it's kind of just been developing. Basically, CSGO, if you aren't familiar with the game beyond how it works as it's a shooter, uh, it works a lot like uh, Team Fortress 2 where you get... You play the game and you get in-game drops, including crates that you have to buy keys for to unlock. And these are typically... These don't make you better at the game. They're just like weapon skins and stuff like that. And how these weapon skins work is that you can actually trade them for real-life money because people will pay extra money to have the specific legendary drop. So in a way, you can argue it's a... It's like it's like World of Warcraft's loot system. You, it's hard to get legendary stuff. Uh, but you can get it. And that's how this mm-hmm. works, is it's a legendary drop, but it doesn't make you any better. So you can purchase these legendary things. And I mean, like, thousands of dollars can be purchased on these things. Not just like, oh, 100 bucks for this thing. It's a 1000 plus. Um, so uh, one of my buddies actually got a $200 thing to drop, and he sold it. Like, it can happen to anybody, clearly. <laughs> so there's this website called CSGO Lotto, which is this place where you can take your stuff that you've gotten and then put it into a into this like betting thing where you can bet for other people's stuff. Now it's not like I take my $10 and bet $10 on your $200 item. It's a little more of a randomness, but you have a likely to win a likeliness to win based off of the amount you put in. So if grunt puts in a thousand dollars and I put in a hundred dollars, he's more likely to win, but there's still a chance I could win. That's how it works. Well, there Where'd are two guys. Dollars? Huh? Where'd I get this thousand dollars? First of all, uh, you believed hard enough. All right. Works for me. <laughs> um, anyways, there's these two live streamers, uh, T. Martin and Syndicate are their names, and they have been promoting CS:GO Lotto. Now they didn't say they were sponsored by it, so a lot of people were up in arms about that. But what it actually ended up being is they owned it, or they were like part owners of it, and so that's caused this big issue of you guys have shown on stream before being a part of bet- betting in these things, and how the percentage payout works of it essentially is CSGO Lotto takes a certain percentage of each uh, of each transaction uh, and it goes back to the owners to, you know, uh, you would imagine it would help fund the place or whatever. So right. even if they're betting their money into it, they still are going to get some of their money back. Uh, and, and that's essentially where people are drawing big issues with it, along with the whole controversy of they had early videos like, yeah, we just found this really cool website called CSGO Lotto, and you guys should check it out too, when in reality they just owned it. Um, and their defense is basically, we did it, it was morally wrong, yes, but legally wrong, no, because there's public record that we were we had owned it from the beginning, yada, yada, yada. And, yeah, uh, but people aren't going to look at that public record, though, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, like, uh, Philip DeFranco is a guy I follow on YouTube, and he brought up a really good point where it was like, that's like the scene in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where they're just like, well, we had marked Earth for death forever. You just had to know where to look. It's like, well, no one knew where to look. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's like that's the issue. It's like, well, no one knew to look at the site and say, oh, they own it, because they just they weren't very open up about it. They were just kind of like, oh yeah, we're betting and stuff like this. So now there are some lawsuits going against not only CS:GO but Valve, and this is the part I want to talk about specifically. This whole gambling thing is. It's touchy, and I, I have opinions on it, but it's a matter of, uh, legally, I don't know exactly what's right or wrong, blah, blah, blah. But what matters is that Valve is getting sued because, and I quote, they allow this to happen. As in, they allow a third-party site and allow their stuff to be illegally gambled with. And that's what they're being sued for. So, with that in mind, I'm going to quickly change subject to Pokemon Go. Now, Pokemon Go, if you don't know about this, is an augmented reality game on your phone where you can walk around and catch Pokemon, essentially. I've been playing it. It's freaking amazing. Well, whether or not this story I'm showing on screen is true or not, I know this will eventually happen, undoubtedly, because that's just how the world works. Apparently, someone in Massachusetts caused a massive highway accident because they were stopping to catch a Pikachu. That's awful. That's ridiculous. So, 
let's connect these two stories in the best way possible. Who should be responsible for what people do with your game? So I'm a game developer, and I've made Counter-Strike Go and Pokemon Go, and people are doing these things with them. Should I be responsible for the things they're doing with them? For instance, should Valve be responsible for people being able to gamble the money that the things that they have item wise on other things and should pokemon ghost developers be responsible for the people who decide to stop their car in the highway and catch pikachu hmm. now there's obviously no black and white answer here but uh, no. one i'm really happy i connected these two stories and two it's a very good topic to talk about because this kind of goes almost all the way back to the 90s and like mortal Kombat, where it's like oh these are changing these are affecting our children which studies have proven they don't but it's it's a matter of do people still believe that. that. People still do, and it's stupid. But like, any time a mass shooting happens, it's like, oh, he played Grand Theft Auto. It's like, well, actually, a lot of people play Grand Theft Auto. This one guy also played Grand Theft Auto and shot people. It doesn't mean. Doesn't mean the two are related. But that's a different subject. Yeah, that's a, it's a different subject. But um, I don't know. I, I I truly don't think Valve should be sued for this um, because I, I think the only merit in the idea of it's their fault is that. They let you sell these things for money, and I know that for a fact how their marketplace works, they take roughly, I don't want to say 10%, but they take a decent percent of what all sales. So like uh, when it, Steam trading cards are how I know this. Uh, trading cards are game, things you get just by playing games that are trading card enabled, and then you can uh, get badges and cool stuff on Steam like backgrounds for your profile, or you can just sell them for like a penny a card. Uh, so if I sell like a six a, a card for six pennies, I get two, I get four because Valve takes two pennies. That's essentially how it works. So I'm I can guarantee that if you're selling a thing you got in Counter Strike, that you are not getting exactly what you're selling. So if the for instance my buddy who sold it for two hundred, I think he actually ended up only getting like one forty or something like that. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but they take a percentage is what I'm saying, and I think that's where you can draw merit. Like you're allowing them to buy and sell these things, so gambling on them is no different. I think right. that's the argument they may go with. Um, I think, beyond all that, it shouldn't be Valve's responsibility what people do in a third-party site using things they've acquired in the game. Because, in reality, what's, what's, different, what's the difference between them selling that item and taking that money to a casino? Exactly. Versus just gambling on a third-party site with the stuff without having to take the pay cut of Valve. If anything, that, that site's doing them a favor and giving them more money. Because Valve yeah. would have taken the money they sold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, that's... That's tough. You know, it really... Like I said, it's really not a black and white answer. <clears throat> it, yeah, it really isn't. Uh, and... I don't think Valve should be held responsible for that. And I don't think in the Pokemon Go story that Pokemon Go should be uh, held responsible either. Because, I mean, honestly, when you boot the app up... And I might... I'll just do it real quick here so everyone can see it. Uh, Still bitter about my Charmander. I got a bubbles or how do you think I feel? When we boot the game up here, so this is the this is the company's logo. It's Niantic. I think it's there. Or Niantic, sorry. Niantic. Niantic's like a hill or something. So it's loading the game up now. And here's the music and stuff. Now it's very hard to read. Let me see if I can get it on here. No, it already booted me into the game. I feel very sad about that. Uh, but right before when it plays that music and before it boots you into the game, it says, be mindful of your surroundings, stay alert at all times. So I think that saves them from being liable in any sense. But there right. will be people who argue that that shouldn't save them. Um, regardless, it's not their fault oh, no. that people just run out in the middle of the street. No. Even if they're it's, holding the phone in their hand. It's not, yeah. it's not AT&T's fault when someone texts and drives and then gets killed. No. And I don't want to talk about these demented things like this and just make you feel sad today. But, you know, it, it, that's important it's, to know. Yeah. It, it, it's happening, though. Like, I said before we started this, I've read several articles of people going out into traffic and getting hit, you know, because gotta catch that Pokemon. That, just, uh, in itself, is just people's general carelessness. Yeah. I was, carelessness is a better word than I... I would have said stupidity, and that's not, I, that's, that's I was not going a matter of being to, stupid, but I think carelessness is a better word. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, but carelessness is much better. Um, it, ignorance also could function in some mm -hmm. some cases and i don't i it's you can't blame the developers no for what people do with their games it, it i don't know that that to me is like saying uh, i sold this video game i sold a physical disc to somebody and they decided to use it in the most perverted manner ever 
how is that my fault? Well, you gave them the disc. Well, yeah, but the disc isn't intended to be... The, the game specifically says don't walk out into the street. So why... <laughs> so when you walk out into the street, what are they supposed to do? I mean, right. You know, yeah. Val can't be in fault for being like, oh, our community decided they're going to gamble with the things that we've uh, given to them in-game that they can sell to each other right. for money. Yeah. How is that our fault? They sold them to each other for money and used that money to go casino gambling and lost their, all their money. How is that our fault? Yeah. So I, I, I don't think that that lawsuit will win... But I definitely think it sparks an interesting conversation of who's really at fault here. In my yeah. personal opinion, it's CSGO Lotto's fault, quote-unquote. But uh, in reality, if gambling is legal and you were able to gamble on this website, it's it's only your fault that you lost the things you lost. Right. And, you know, in these cases, I don't think I agree. Valve really doesn't have anything to do with it other than the fact that, you know, yes, they do allow it, but, you know it's a double-edged sword for them because either they get backlash from the community about allowing stuff like this, like it's happening now, or they get backlash from the community for not allowing something like this to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a double-edged sword for them. And with, like, Pokemon Go, that's that's just not... That's no way should they be responsible for that. I'm going to make a note that I'm 99% sure that this article is fake, by the way, because I've seen this headline before on the right here where ISIS took responsibility for Pokemon Go's login problems, which I'm pretty sure was just a really funny, like, joke. Uh, but anyways, it does none of the matter is I know for a fact that these issues are happening. It's just this is uh, right. a conversation starting on this. Like I said, regardless if it's true or not, it will happen. I hate to right. say that, but the amount of people right. that play this and the carelessness that we know exists, this is definitely one that I know for a fact will be a headline when it truly does happen. Oh yeah, definitely. So, I guess I probably should have read like the first paragraph and been like, oh yeah, this definitely is fake, but you know. Yeah, the point still stands though, even at that, so. Yeah. Not to disval- not to invalidate anything we just said, but I just wanted to let you know that this was actually fake, but either way. Uh, it does connect well to the whole Valve getting sued and the fact that they have to put the disclaimer to be careful right when you open up the game. It, yeah. It sucks, but you know. Yeah, such is life, I guess. I mean, <laughs> or something. I mean, with how crappy this whole week has been with a lot of the violence and stuff, it's hard to find a silver lining. I guess the silver lining is Pokemon Go is freaking great. And Bungie Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we surprisingly yeah, didn't just, really go over in time, but I think... Uh, do you have anything else to add here? Not really. Just, if you're going to catch Pokemon, be aware of your surroundings like the game says. Absolutely. And Don't. If, you get, if you get hit by a car, you cannot blame the guys who made the game. Also also that, you know. Is that Pikachu really worth walking out in front of that uh, freeway? Yes. No, it's not. <laughs> don't don't take my word for it. <laughs> I have yet to find a Pikachu, though. Very upset about that. Ah, you're not helping. I, I oh, sorry. downloaded it to try it and uh, found there was a Charmander in my front yard. Went to catch it, the app crashed. Oh, uh, that's heartbreaking. It, you, the starter Pokemon only show up right when you boot the game up, from what I understand. Uh, mm. So that I, I think I had an option between Charmander and Bulbasaur, and I picked Bulbasaur first. I was like, oh, I can just catch them both. And then Charmander wasn't there anymore. And I was like, well, that's upsetting. Oh, well. But, you know. I don't even know if I, I have... I do have, like, 800 so. Rattatas, though. Oh, well, there you go. Something like that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we're gonna wrap it up here. So, um, I believe I'm going to try to get an article out this week, and this is so I have it on record that I'm going to do it. Uh, that's going to talk more about that firefight thing. Uh, you're hearing it right here, folks. You're hearing it first. Breaking Sunday news. 3.45 p.m. Eastern. The Frantic will try to write an article. Note the try. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis I'm gonna, on try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna more so just be a, a someone who criticizes everything pre done at this point, because well, you'll just have to read it. I'm not gonna tell you. Don't that. spoil it, man. Well, Don't not spoil, spoil it. it for you. Okay. Come um, on. Let's do the quote unquote advertising or self promotion, basically. Um, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at franicj 3 Super weird. That way. He. <laughs> He is Onyx Spartan, O N Y X Spartan, all in word. Uh, we can also you can also find Frantic Talks officially at, at Frantic underscore Talks. We'll tweet about articles, we'll tweet these podcasts, we'll tweet my other podcasts that I do where I talk about magic, all that fun stuff. 
Hey, speaking of magic, magic.franticalks.com. It's where you can read about Magic the Gathering and really dumb stuff that we like to do in that game. Uh, we being me and my good friend Luke, who I did mention on this podcast. Uh, take off the magic part of that URL and go to franticalks.com, and that's where you can find all the fun stuff. It's the mothership. Uh, that's where our articles and podcasts are posted. 99% podcast in the past, like, 10 posts, but hey. There's one there that isn't, and it's a very good one. Mr. Grunt, who's over there, pointed the right way. He wrote that. I don't know oh. which way I need to point here, so... Oh, by the way. Yeah, uh, to, your, to your right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to watch this video that we keep referencing, that you, if you're listening audio only, you'll have to go to YouTube and search Frantic Talks, because we don't have a doing the same thing you're doing we don't have a fr- uh, <laughs> official url we need 100 subscribers get on it people and do it at you forever <laughs> um beyond that we'll we post the podcast there and you can watch these on video but if you want to watch them live twitch.tv forward slash frantic j3 the third the third being t-h-e the number three r-d because some bastard took frantic talk or frantic j3 man i fucked it up i took the initiative and didn't let you ask me the question i fucked it up oh. exactly see that's what happens when you when you do Just that stuff. Ramble a mile a minute, yeah. You You're fired. <laughs> Wait. Yep, I'm fired, guys. See ya. Just sign off. Uh, <laughs> but every Saturday, typically, at 3 p.m. Eastern, we will probably not be recording next weekend. Weekend after that might have to be on a Sunday. Just watch the Frantic Talks Twitter account. We'll update you there because it's July is a weird month for me. So <laughs> summer is a weird month for me is the real real issue here. Anyways, um, <laughs> facebook.com forward slash Frantic Talks, all one word. We'll post articles there. Uh, it's not as active as our Twitter account or our, honestly, the mothership. So, uh, other than that, I think that's everything. Find us on iTunes. Search for Anic Talks. We'll be the only one there. That's where I also post my magic podcast. So, you'll get kind of like two podcasts in a week on that one, typically. So Two for the price of one. Oh, uh, yeah. The price is zero dollars. Or whatever. Whatever. Uh, zero bucks. Subscribe. Though. Whatever it is uh, we should you do for podcasts. We should start a Patreon. Yeah, there you go. Get people to start donating like a dollar a month to us. No, we'll do with that dollar. Probably just pay our web- website rent. But you'll help us pay the website rent, and that will matter. <laughs> I'm gonna do a poll. Should we start a Patreon? <laughs> 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 All right, I think that covers everything. Anything else to add for advertising? Room uh, temperature water. Drink it. Uh, yep. Are oh, you doing it too? I don't have a drink. I'm like actually very thirsty right now. What? So we're gonna go ahead and end this podcast so I can go have water. <laughs> Uh, moral of the last five seconds stay hydrated moral and look up when you're high Pokemon going <laughs> not that far up <laughs> alright guys I uh, ho- hope you have a really good next week and if we don't talk if we don't get to see all of your lovely faces the next weekend we'll definitely get to see it after that so uh, hope you enjoy your weekend I'm Frantic I'm Grunt we'll see you guys next time